Hi, welcome back all of you. This is the new video in this series of Azure Infrastructure as a Service, exam code 70-533. In this video, we will learn what is a clock block and a page block in Azure Storage. If you guys remember, we created the storage account in the previous video. We will again create a storage account and that is, we'll select V2 and I'll show you how to create a container and what is a clock block and a page block. Let me just quickly log on to Azure portal and then we'll continue. Okay, so I'm in the portal right now. Let me just quickly create a storage account. Okay, storage. Storage account block file table in queue. Let me just fill in the details. Is not available. Okay, this is and it has to be unique globally. I'm going to select V2. Location would be Central India. I'm going to keep it LRS. It's a steel. Let us go with pot disabled there as you go. My resource group, I don't want to enable virtual network. Create. And let it create and I'll come back. Okay, my resource account is created. So let me just scroll down a bit and see. You see a block service here, containers, cores, custom domain, a lot of other features. So let us stick to the containers option for this video. There's nothing in here because if I want to use this storage account to upload or to store any of my data, it can be a backup, it can be my files, uh, images, PDF documents, it can be a VHD and whatnot. So I have to create a container. It's a parent folder is space asset storage. And in that, I am kind of creating a subfolder. So let's say I am uploads. Just for test purposes, I have a container named uploads. And now inside that container, I have to upload my files. So you see this upload option here. Click on upload. So when you would. Uh, Click on the advanced option, it will give you an option to for the block type. You see, Azure Block Storage supports three block types. It's block blocks, page blocks, and append block. Once block has been created, it, uh, its type cannot be changed. Let's say you do not uh, upload.php files as page blocks recommended. So, if you are uploading a backup file or an image file or any file, and if you don't select anything, Let's say you don't you do not click on advanced and you do not specify it to be a type of block, then it will automatically do it for the block block. So you see you select a file here, it can be anything. Let's say I go to my documents, file anything here. Okay, let's say I upload this. I'm not specifying, I'm not doing anything. It is uploaded. Okay, so you cancel this, you see this. Now, when you click on this, this file has been uploaded, and then you will go inside that file. But you see the type, it's a block block. And let's say you want to. So the block blob you can use for uploading your, uh, as I told you, the backup files, your images, or a notified file. But for the page blob, when you are uploading a VHD, you have to select the page blob option. So a block blob, as I told you, you can use it for images or a backup file because 
a block can contain multiple sub blocks as well so a, a single block can be of 100 mbs or few kbs and there can be a file which consists of multiple blocks and all of that, those blocks can be of random sizes it's the size is not specific so that is why we select the option as a block block but when you are uploading a dht file you will have an option to select a page block and it's recommended from microsoft azure as well so here you go whenever you are uploading a file let's say i do not click on advanced option i and i select a file randomly i sel i am selecting if i am selecting an image file so let us say i am selecting this you will see that it will by default will be selected as a block file block block not a page block and the page blobs are randomized and it is it is properly functionable for the randomized page operations so it can be a sync calls as well which can be generated from the randomized operations to access the page block that is why we I recommend it to use it for the DHT file. So you see that this file has been uploaded. If I just cancel this upload button and see the type of the blog, it's blog blog. So whenever you are uploading a .dht file, it will automatically from the back end will use the blog type as the page blog, not uh, the, the blog blog. So I hope this was informative to all of you. Create storage account. Try to upload a few things. I, I'll let you know about the other features as well of the storage accounts. You must be thinking about the course, custom domain, the file service, table service, tool service, monitoring. We'll cover monitoring and the uh, defining alerts in a different series. And in this video series, but it's a different topic which covers the alerts for all the things. We have new thing coming in, the life cycle management. It's still in preview mode, but it's a very good usage of the storage account if you want to store your backups, your server backups, your SQL backups, or any other third party application backup onto the Azure Web Service. So I hope this was informative to you. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and share in with your feedback with us in the comment section. Share my videos on the social media platforms, YouTube, LinkedIn, Google+, Facebook, anything else you can think of, Twitter, Reddit, Pinterest, and make this channel more famous and get us and help us get more subscribers. Thank you. We have a great day ahead.